Some people truly believe that becoming successful is a game of sheer luck. Yeah, there is a 1% of people out here who are rich and wealthy and quote-unquote successful. And that's only because they're born into the royal family or they're Jay-Z and Beyonce's son or daughter. For the most part, 99.9% .9 of people walking planet Earth, the ones them that are successful is because they made good decision after good decision. And the ones them that are unsuccessful is because they made bad decision after bad decision. The people them who is successful, it's got nothing to do with luck, you know. The people them who are unsuccessful, it's got nothing to do with being unlucky. Certain people feel like, oh, because I'm broke, because I'm poor, because I'm struggling, it's because I'm unlucky. It's the colour of my skin, or I'm from this area, or I'm born into this family. No. Chat to some woman I know. And she knows I've got properties and that. And obviously I told her, oh yeah, obviously the tenants that are the property. They're good tenants and that, they pay their rent and that, but they live dirty, you know. And she said, oh, obviously it's not that good that they live dirty. And don't get it twisted. They don't live that bad. These new ones don't live that bad. I had some before that lived dirty, but all of them pay their rent anyway. The ones them now, they live a bit rough, but it's not that bad. She said, oh, you know, they live a bit rough and that, but at least they pay their rent. You're lucky because I know someone who's unlucky and I don't know whoever this guy is, his tenants don't pay the rent. They don't pay rent on time or they're slow or they're paying half rent and that. And I had to tell her, listen, it ain't got nothing to do with luck. It's all about your personality and how you deal with the fucking tenants. If you're the landlord and you're dealing with the tenants directly, it ain't got nothing to do with luck. It's all to do with your personality. I had to break it down. I'm going to break it down for you lot. If you ain't heard this before, you're going to hear it again. I'll invite a man over to view a room. Let's say, for example, the room is £300 a month. I'll tell him you have to give me £300. Plus another three hundred pound, yeah. So six hundred pound before you move into the room. If you fail to pay the rent, I'll serve you a notice and you have to leave. I don't fuck about, you know. The reason why my tenants have always paid the rent because they know there's going to be consequences and repercussions if they don't. I had this property here six years now, yeah. It's February, twenty twenty three. Had this property here almost six years. And before, man used to let it out and that. And let's say, for example, consecutively, 18 months straight, I had two people in the yard. That's 36 months worth of rent. Nobody failed to pay the rent. My other tenants then had people in there for a year, 12 months times two, because I had two rooms running up. That's 24 months worth of rent. No one's failed to pay the rent. It's not a coincidence, blood. It's not luck. Any lot watching this right now that'll watch me over a period of time or at least seen five, six, ten videos and that and feel like, ah, oh, yeah, man. Like scratching their head, like, why is Jay successful? Why is Jay doing well in it? Like, what's 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 the secret? Like, you know, was he lucky? No, fam, man's not lucky, blood. Do you know what it is? I take life seriously. I don't fuck about. Literally, I'm aggressive with life. I don't play about. I don't allow the wind to, pl to blow me from pillar to post and that. I take control of my life as much as I can. Obviously, I cannot control if I catch some disease or something and I die. But everything else, I take control and I take accountability of over my life. Everything is my fault for the most part. Everything that's good that's happened to me and everything that's bad that's happened to me. That's why I can look back and think. That's why I can always... That's why I always... I'm not against this... Uh, you know, oh, well, we're victims as black people when it comes to the police and that. Because I know, if you're on road, blood, and you're hanging around and you're doing nothing and you're not doing any positive activities in that, you're bumming it out on the streets, you will get stop and search frequently. I've been there, blood. Then when I come off the road and I realise that, bro, I don't get stop and search no more. I know why. I'm not on the road doing jack shit. I've never bunny weed anyway, but I've never on road just jamming. You're on road jamming, you put yourself in a position for the police them to swing by and stop and search you, blood. I'm not available for the police to come stop search me. Don't get interested. Now and then the police them will stop me on my bike. But that's because, again, taking accountability. I'm doing stuff I'm not supposed to. That front wheel's up in the air. 
Other than that, man don't get stopped by the police, blood. I never get stopped by the police in my car. It has happened, obviously. But this is not a reoccurring regular thing, bro. If things are not going the way you want in your life, it's because you're making bad decision after bad decision. And you're not serious, blood. Ask yourself this question. Are things going good for you in your life? If the answer is no, are you as serious as Jay Wise? The answer is no, blood. I am not no superior human being. I don't have magic DNA. My brain is configured the right way, though. Some people believe, oh, because this is because they're a black person. That's why, you know, they're unsuccessful. No, if you put my brain in their body, they will make something of themselves. That's it. I'm not a genetic wonder. Yeah, I'm good looking in that. But I'm not some tall. Fuck it, I'm five foot nine. I'm no genetic wonder. I'm not from a rich family. I'm just like you lot. Man was born average, just like you lot. But I made myself above average, blood. You can too. But you have to start by being fucking serious with life. Stop all this nonchalant. I'm not saying be a panicker and that. But people need to take life a lot more seriously. I don't fuck about I don't like sloppiness. I don't like laziness. Even in my day-to-day -day or weekly routine, I get into the habit of doing things that I don't like to do. I go running every other day. I fucking hate running. I don't like it. I never get up in the morning. I never fixed myself the night before. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man. I'm going to go and tear up that road tonight, tomorrow, sorry. No, I hate running. Runs about 35, 40 minutes or something like that. I hate running. I never think to myself, yeah, I can't wait to go running the next morning. Every now and then I get a new pair of trainers and I think, yeah, let me go and test out the kicks then. Five minutes into the run, I want to turn back. I never enjoy my run. But you know what? I've trained myself to do things that I don't like. So that when, you know, life happens and that and you have to do things that you don't like. You're used to it. It's nothing. It's normal to do things that you don't like. If you set your, if you set your life up to a point where it's like, Every day you only do the things that you want to. When it comes to doing things that you don't want to do, you're never going to get them done. When you set your life up to where you do things that you don't want to do, because you because you force yourself, when it comes to things that you don't want to do, I'm going to get it done regardless, whether I like it or not. I'm not sloppy. I'm a serious man. I don't play about. I have high standards, so in no way, shape or form do I like to compromise. I don't believe I should have my standards compromised. I don't believe I should lower my standards. My standard is here and it needs to remain here. So I've got a little bit of OCD, especially with my kitchen. I'm getting twisted. I'm looking around my house now. There's bits and pieces all over the place. Everything is not in order. No, I'm getting twisted. But when it comes to my kitchen, I don't know why. I've got OCD and I like my kitchen to be immaculate. I don't like clutter. I don't like seeing lots of things out. I go to people's yards and that, and their kitchen worktop is just full with stuff. I don't like that. I, I'm a minimalist. I don't even have no fucking sofas. Anyway, don't get this thing twisted because I have high standards. So what I'm saying might seem worse than it actually is. What I'm saying might seem worse, might seem bad, but it's actually quite normal. But still, I have high standards, just so you understand. Let's say when I leave to go to work in the morning, there might be a cup of tea or a spoon in the sink. That's fine. When I come back to this house, my girl is here, yeah? When I come back to this house, I expect to see only that cup of tea that I left and the spoon or nothing. I don't like coming back to my house and seeing dishes in the sink, pots and pans and that. I get it. When people eat food, they don't wash up straight away. Whatever, they mess about, whatever, and they do what they're doing and that. But then, obviously, they'll go and clean it afterwards. But I had to have a talk with my girl. I'm getting twisted. I've got high standards in that. I had to tell her, when I come back, I don't want to see no pots and pans in this. Every now and then, once in a while, it? but not every time. Don't get it twisted. It went overflowing and there went no green liquid oozing out of the sink and that. 
Because I go to people's houses and the yards are dirty. Or go in the kitchen and the kitchen is nuts. So when I leave my house and I go to work at other people's dirty houses, I'm in their dirty kitchen. When I come back to my yard, I want this house spotless, blood. I don't like to compromise with my standard. Certain girls, they might watch my content, you know, and think, you know what? Anytime Jay's girl don't want him, I'll have him. No! My standards are so high. Most of these girls out here, they cannot handle a man like me. They're too low caliber. I know they're too fucking low caliber because all their exes are waste men. Gallin watching this right now. Is your current boyfriend or your current exes, are they on what I'm on? Have they got the mentality that I've got? There you go. You're on a man's level. Trust me. Trust me. My, I'm, I'm a nightmare. Yeah? I'm a nightmare to deal with, yeah, to some degree. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a cool person, I'm a good person and that, but I'm a nightmare, yeah, to some degree. But I've got standards, that's why I can't be friends with anybody. That's why I find it hard, like, I can get along with people, but for me to be someone's friend, nah, nah. Like I said, I'd love to be friends with a man like Andrew Tate and that, man that are serious, man that <laughs> grab life by the horns and they're aggressive with this thing. Because most of the people around me, they're just on a joke thing. Yeah, they want to live a nice lifestyle and that. But it's not for the right reason. They just want to look good. They want to show off and that. I want to lead, lead a nice lifestyle. I want to leave shit behind for my children. For my lineage. And even funny enough, Andrew Tate did say in one of his things and that. When it comes to trying to find um, people that are on the same level as you. It's very difficult. There are people that are like me, aggressive with life, serious about life, not just doing well, but you know that they really switched on and that. You know, watching me, I'm not a sloppy person who's just relaxed. Ah, oh, yeah, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter. No, it fucking matters. It's difficult. He was saying that it's difficult. There are people that exist like him, but they're so far apart, it's difficult to ever encounter these people. And I feel exactly the same. When you have high standards and that, it's difficult to come across people that are like you. Obviously, there's people around me, they think they're like me, they think they're on the same level as me. You're not. They're not. You're not willing to work as hard as me, you're not willing to make as much sacrifice as me. There's people out here, they think just wearing nice clothes and driving a nice car is the be on end. No, that's bullshit. Anyway, any of you lot ever wondering like, why is Jay, like how do you, how, how do you get to position that he's in where he's living comfortable and that? Listen, I ain't living in a fucking mansion and that, but a man's living comfortable and that. I'm thriving. I'm not surviving in this winter, you know. I just come back from someone's yard, freezing cold, blood. I'm thriving. Because I made good decision after good decision. It's not luck. The people then that's successful in this world, they're not lucky. They make good decision after good decision. And the people them that don't live their best life, live in a shit existence. When I was talking about living best lives, and I don't mean driving a Ferrari. I mean living comfortable and thriving, doing the things that they want to do because they can afford it. The people them that are not living that life, they're living uncomfortable. The people them that can't afford stuff because they don't earn enough. Or like for me, for example, yeah, let's say like my car, and I've got a little shitty Honda Civic 09, yeah? I'm driving that because I want to. I'm not driving that because I cannot afford a Mercedes or, or a decent new car. Even if it was a brand new Ford Focus. I'm not driving the Honda Civic, my beat up Honda Civic, because I cannot afford a brand new Ford or a used or brand new Mercedes. I'm driving it because I want to. The people then that are unsuccessful is because they made bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. It's not because they're unlucky, blood. Until you adopt that mindset, you will always be a loser. I know where I've gone right, right in life and I know where I've gone wrong in life. Until you identify where you've gone wrong in life and where you've gone right. See, when you don't identify where you've gone right in life, you just think, oh, I was lucky then. 
And when you don't identify where you've gone wrong, wrong in life, you just say, oh, I was unlucky. No, it's never an accident. Yeah, All the people them that don't live their best life live shitty existences. There's something in their story that don't add up. And if I look back through their timeline, I can tell you and pinpoint exactly where they went wrong. They were born, they went to school, they finished school, they went to college, they dropped out of college. Bam! Right then and there, they dropped out of college. Now they start doing all this bullshit. Now they start saying, oh, you know, I'm just going to do this little course here, this little job here. Things will work itself out. Life does not work itself out, blood. Before you blink, blood. You're 30 years old. You've got two youths. You're living in a council house. You're struggling. You're struggling for bills. You're living in a freezing cold yard. You're not driving a beat up car because it's your choice, because you're frugal. You're driving a beat up car because you cannot afford to drive a new or decent, reliable car. And there's a big fucking difference. Me, I'm a frugal man, out of choice. I don't need to scrape by because I'm broke and I can't afford to live whatever lifestyle I want. I do it out of choice. So therefore, when I decide to start spending money in that, well, I was watching something the other day. I think I was watching a reaction video I did. And the woman talking about, oh, before she makes, a, like, buy something in the shop. I'm not talking about crisping drinks, but let's say clothes and that. She has to look at her bank balance to check that there's enough money in it or to check that she can afford it overall. I've never had to do that in my life, ever. Because I'm not going out of my way to, oh, yeah, let me just buy this car for 10 grand and that. Therefore, I always know that I've got enough to buy a jacket for 200 pounds. I can walk into any shop right now and buy whatever the fuck I want. That don't come from luck, yeah? That comes from making good decision after good decision over a prolonged period of time, bro. I can hear my fucking neighbor's dog next door. So I reckon the dog's gonna start barking in it. So I'm out for nine. Stay wise, done, bro.